Like us, animals have eyes to see, ears to hear, noses to smell, and sensory nerves with which to feel, the sense organs, or receptors as they're called. But don't assume these hens see exactly as we see. Birds' eyesight is considerably more acute than ours. They detect smaller and more distant things. With eyes set to the side of their heads, they also get a wider panoramic view of everything around them. So these birds depend largely on their eyes to assess the rich new world of external stimuli in which they've suddenly landed. Sense organs or receptors of animals differ in efficiency and capacity from ours and those of other species. Some of their senses are more acute, some less, some just different. This resting sow shows the powerful receptor on which pigs largely depend. See how she uses it to keep an eye on, or rather keep a nose on, what's going on around her. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Pigs, as you see, can quickly learn to perform domestic doggy tricks. Like dogs, they also have hundreds of times our capacity to detect smells and are sometimes used to sniff out illegal drugs. By hiding breakfast cereals among similar sized pebbles and placing them in an out of sight container, we let this pig show you the remarkable capacity of her scent receptor. See how quickly she smells food. This way she also demonstrates another highly efficient receptor. The tissue round a pig's mouth is much more sensitive than our fingertips. With this delicate and discerning sense of touch, she has no difficulty picking out cereal from the pebbles. Despite centuries of domestication and decades of intensive farming, farm animals retain most behavioral abilities of their wild ancestors. Those remarkable scent receptors still help pigs detect and respond to stimuli which signal danger in a way which would have increased their chances of survival in the wild. These pigs are entering a slaughterhouse. The usual loud noises of slaughter machinery have caused a previous sow to urinate in fear. Now, though all is quiet, the pigs, thought to be able to smell an alarm substance in their predecessor's urine, hesitate, alarmed and alerted. In sheep, ears are particularly efficient receptors. You've heard of a kid nap. You're about to see a lamb nap so that a ewe can show us how she uses her sense of hearing to locate and identify her own lamb. While the ewes are distracted by food, the farmer captures a lamb and places it in a prepared hide. The mother's identity becomes clear in seconds. She looks around and begins to call. Another ewe appears to respond to her concern. Scientists have observed that sheep often form a close companionship with another animal in the flock. The ewe considers the possibility that the lamb has strayed into the next field. See how in her search she uses her senses of sight and smell as well as hearing, her light, chemical and sound receptors. The lamb is only a few days old and slow to bleat until he hears his mother and she hears him. Even when several lambs are concealed in different hides at the same time, studies reveal that each mother can identify her own lamb by sound alone. The lamb is released. See how the mother uses her scent receptor to confirm that Yes, this is indeed her own lamb. By now, spring is underway and warm enough for our still sparsely feathered battery hens to step outside into a new world of colour. Reared indoors, these birds have never even seen the colour green, yet their eyes are able to perceive an even wider colour spectrum than ours, a broader rainbow. Birds have the most complex color vision of any animal. They detect color hues we cannot see. 
No one knows exactly how colours appear to them, but a bird's eye view may well be as different from ours as this. What we see is not what they see. Their sensitivity to ultraviolet light also reveals patterns on petals, visible to them, but not detected by our own visual receptors. Their physical coordination has much improved since they released from the cage, which didn't allow the exercise necessary to maintain muscle and bone strength. Now, at the next step in the stimulus response chain, we'll learn how they and other animals mentally coordinate and assess stimuli. These calves are demonstrating the simplest form of learned response known as habituation. See how vigorously they respond to a possible threat when a scientist opens an umbrella. This is a technique used to train police horses for crowd control. But as the umbrellas opened again and again, they respond less and less. They've learned this stimulus doesn't signal anything to fear and incorporated the lessons of experience into their response. Animals can also predict what is about to happen by employing a form of learning called classical conditioning. They learn to associate a stimulus with a particular response. These sheep grazing by a lane ignore passing vehicles. They too have learned by habituation not to waste energy by reacting to something of no importance to them. But a vehicle which is important to them is about to appear. The farmer's Land Rover, which brings food each day. They instantly distinguish its appearance and sound from that of other vehicles and react appropriately. They've learned to associate the Land Rover with food. Here, by classical conditioning, animals have learned to link something the farmer does with a particular result. But they can also learn to associate one of their own actions with a result. On discovering the outcome of an action is desirable, they often repeat it, becoming increasingly skilled. By such trial and error learning, animals become capable of exerting some control over events. Since their release, our old friends the battery hens have learned to run an obstacle course, which demonstrates a whole range of such learned responses. Each hen must peck a key to release a catch, squeeze through a small space, tightrope across a thin pole, peck a wire loop three times to instruct a computer to release a door, Take the right turn at a T-junction and leap over water, all in order to reach a box where she can make a nest to lay her eggs. Animals' ability to learn by trial and error is put to good use in some more welfare-friendly farming systems. These sows are group housed. Farm animals evolved from sociable species and retain a strong need for companionship of their own kind. <laughs>